Guten Tag and welcome to PA Dutch 101. This is video 17 in our series and we'll be covering the accusative case. I would invite you, if you have not seen the previous 16 videos, to watch those first before going any farther with this video. A lot of the things that we'll be talking about in this video are building upon the foundation that we've already created in videos 1 through 16. So, if this is your first look at these videos, please go back, watch the previous ones before jumping into this one. But today we're talking about the accusative case. This is a grammar based video. Uh, we're not going to be building vocabulary. We're going to be delving into sentence structure and how exactly the accusative case functions within the Pennsylvania Dutch language. So let's get going. Well, as we covered in video 12, uh, there is another case which we call the nominative case. And we learned that the nominative case is always used to identify the subject of a sentence. If you have not seen that video, that's a really important one to watch, especially before watching this one. The accusative case, our new topic for today, is used to identify the direct object of a sentence. And most sentences will have both a subject and a direct object. So we already covered the subject, today we're going to look at the direct object. Okay? An example in English, here we have the sentence, Alice buys the book. Uh, we covered in video 12 that Alice is the subject, so that's the nominative case. Buys is our verb, and then we're left with the book. The book in this case, in, in this situation, is the direct object. It is what she is buying. The direct object, by definition, is what's receiving the action of the verb. So Alice is buying. What is she buying? She's buying the book. That is our direct object, and that's going to be the focus of this video, because that's going to take the accusative case. So Alice is the subject. Book is the direct object, as I just said. And if we take that sentence and translate it into Dutch, we get... Die Alice kauft es Buch. Die Alice kauft es Buch. Okay. Notice that the word order in both English and in the Dutch are exactly the same, so we don't have to worry about changing word order or anything like that. Okay. In video 12, we also covered the def definite article, which is the word for the. Uh, in the nominative case, we learned that there were masculine, feminine, neuter, and plural genders of nouns. That carries over as well in the accusative case. And if you notice, the definite articles for the accusative case are exactly the same as the nominative. So if you've already memorized those, you're a step ahead of everybody else. So again, for the masculine, for the, it's der. For feminine, it's d. For neuter, it's s. And for plural, it's d. Exactly the same as the nominative case. The, definite, uh, the indefinite articles in the accusative case, or the a or an, are also exactly the same as the nominative case. So again, if you've memorized those, you're ahead of the game. Remember that the indefinite article does not specifically identify the noun that they're associated with. It's the difference between the book versus a book. And if you notice, for masculine, feminine, neuter, they are all n, e-n, n. Nothing for the plural, because you can't have a plural uh, indefinite article. One difference between the, uh, well, this isn't a difference, actually. In the nominative case, we learned that there were subject pronouns or personal pronouns. The I, you, he, she, it, we, you, guys, and they, ich, du, er, yes, mir, dir, and sie. We covered those. Well, in the accusative case, we have a new set of personal pronouns. And we're going to need to know these because they get used quite a bit. And they do change a little bit from the nominative, so let's go through those real quick. The accusative for ich is mich. 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 In English, it would be me. Okay. For do, it changes to dich. 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 For er, n. 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 C and S stay the same. C and S. Over here we have some change. The mir changes to uns. 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 And the equivalent in English would be us. Okay. You guys, dear, changes to eich. 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 And the Z changes. Uh, Z stays the same. So the accusative personal pronouns mich. Dich, N, Z, S, Uns, Eich, and Z. We're going to be using these later on. Okay? 
Remember that what is the job of a personal pronoun as we covered before? They replace nouns. And we need to remember that since these are the accusative personal pronouns, they're going to replace the direct object. Where the, the nominative ones replace the subject, these guys are going to replace the direct object. For an example, we have here the sentence, Ich ken der Ralph, or Ich ken der Ralph, depending how you want to pronounce his, his name. So, I, ich is the subject, ken is our verb to know a person, we've covered that already, and der Ralph is the direct object. So if we wanted to replace der Ralph with a pronoun, and instead of saying, I know Ralph, we want to say, I know him, since this is the direct object, we need to use the corresponding accusative personal pronoun. Ralph is a guy, so we want to replace it with him, the he form, which if we look back at our chart, would give you ich ken en. I know him. Ich ken en. That would be the same with any of those other situations. If you were replacing a girl, it would be with Z. If you were replacing a neuter noun, it would be S, etc., etc. Okay. One thing the accusative case has that the nominative case did not have is they have their own set of prepositions. And I guarantee you that prepositions, for my money, are some of the hardest things to understand and know and use in Pennsylvania Dutch. There's a lot of them, and they're in different categories. But for today, we're only going to cover one category of prepositions, and those are the accusative prepositions. And out of all of them, I think these are the easiest list. So we got that one going for us. So as I just said, unlike the nominative case, accusative case has prepositions, and there are seven of them that you need to know. Okay. The rule is that whenever you encounter one of these accusative prepositions, or if you're using one of them, the noun associated with the preposition. Usually that's the noun right after it. Always, always, always takes the accusative case. These and this rule never get broken. An accusative preposition always takes the accusative case. There's no exceptions to the rules in this. Learn the rule because it never, ever, ever gets broken. That's a good thing, okay? Let's learn the prepositions and I'll show you how they work. So the first one is bis. 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 And that means until, till, or by. We've used it already. Uh, know that from now on, that's an accusative preposition. The second one is dadich. 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 Which means through. Third one. It's an easy one. It's close to English. Fur. Fur. Fur which means four. The next one, uh, there's, I'm going to give you the next two at the same time because depending on what part of, of Pennsylvania Dutch land, Deitsch or I, you're in, some people will use the top one, some people will use the bottom one. So I gave you both. They both mean the word against. The top one would be pronounced geich, 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 and the bottom one, Gea, Gea, Gea. Know that both mean against. Um means around. Um, um, um. Without is una, una, una. So those are our accusative prepositions. One more time through. Bis, dadig, fur, geig, gehe, um, and unne. Okay. Remember, the rule is whatever noun follows these guys takes the accusative case. And some examples. I have this sentence. Dadig der dog du ich viel. Dadig der dog du ich viel. Now here's an example where we're not necessarily dealing specifically with the direct object. We have a time reference, but we're starting with dadig. Oops. Dadig is one of those prepositions, means through or throughout. So der dog, following it, is the accusative case, because this guy is the most important. Dadig, der dog, du ich viel. Ich is the subject of the sentence, and look, it's all the way back here, but don't worry about that. 
Know that as soon as you see this word, you got to think that's an accusative preposition. Whatever's following it has to be accusative. Dadich der dog do ich feel throughout the day or during the day I do a lot. Okay. Here's a normal sentence. Es Buch ist für mich. Für accusative preposition. Now, why is it mich? Because what we're saying is the book is for me. The difference between accusative and nominative in English would be the example of making this mistake. You would never in English say, the book is for I. That would be nominative, and you hear how that's wrong. You right away you say, that's not right. You would say, me. Me is the accusative form. Für, accusative preposition, forces us to use that. Es Buch ist für mich. The book is for me. Okay. Der Hund läuft um der Gorde. Der Hund läuft um. Accusative preposition, so what's behind it has to be accusative. Um der Gorde. The dog is running around the garden. Okay. So there's those three, uh, three examples of accusative prepositions. Now, there's another special little thing we can tag on with these accusative prepositions. Some accusative prepositions and articles are contracted together as long as there is a special emphasis on the article. This doesn't happen a lot, but you might see it if you're reading stuff in Pennsylvania Dutch, or you might hear it if you're speaking with someone, so I want to make you aware of it. For example, if you have the preposition dadig, and the next, ver the next noun following it is neuter, so you get dadig plus s, you can contract that and write it this way and say dadigs, dadigs, dadigs. You can do the same thing with fur plus a neuter noun, fur plus s, first. 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 And you'll also hear some Pennsylvania Dutch speakers say fers. Fers. Fer and fur. Depends what area you're in, but you might hear both. Okay? This also works with gage plus a neuter noun, and you get gage. 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 Now, if you have these, you're still going to have the noun after it. But instead of having to write dotty s noun, you now can contract them if you want, but only in these situations. Here's another one. Um plus s gives you ums. 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 Okay. Again, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen and you'll encounter it, so I wanted you to be aware. Now, let's take everything we've covered so far and practice this a little bit. Play this with Ewing. Here's a sentence where I have some blanks in it, and I want you to provide the correct word for the blank. Notice that in parentheses I'm telling you, for the first one I want you to give me the correct form of the, and for the second line I want you to give me the correct form of a, an indefinite article. And I'm telling you that this noun, citing, is feminine. So, we already know what the word dotty means, we covered that in family terms. So I want you to tell me that the dotty least a citing. Subject up front, so that's nominative. Citing is our direct object. So it's going to be accusative. I'll give you a second to check your notes. If you do it correctly, you'll end up with der Daudi lest en Zeiting. Der Daudi lest en Zeiting. The dad or the father is reading a newspaper. Zeiting, Zeiting is the word for newspaper. Here's another one to try. This time I want again the up front. A in the back, and this time our noun that we're dealing with is tomet. It's neuter. Fra is our subject. We covered that in family terms as well. If you do it correctly, you'll end up with die fra kauft and tomet. Die fra kauft and tomet. The woman is buying a tomato. Okay. How about another one? I want you to give me the correct form of him on the line this time. Ich ken blank. So look at your pronouns. What is the correct pronoun for him? If you do it correctly, you get ich ken en. And that was one directly we had used earlier in the video. Ich ken en. How about another one? This time I want you to give me the correct form of me. Again, another one of those accusative personal pronouns. Give you a second to look that up. You should get when you're done. Is and Geschenk für mich. Is and Geschenk 
für mich. Is the present or is a present for me? Mich. Okay. So that was the accusative case in a nutshell. Remember, we covered what the accusative case deals with, direct object. We covered the ways of saying the definite article, the. Indefinite articles, a and an. The accusative personal pronouns and the accusative prepositions. So there's five mini things that fall under the topic of accusative case. You've got to know all of them because from this point on, now you'll notice anytime you have a sentence with more than just a subject and a verb, you're going to be using the, the accusative case. Okay. Again, I would invite you, if you ever have questions, comments, or concerns, or ideas for future videos, please email me at busterpa at yahoo.com. I have been receiving emails and comments, and I appreciate them. Keep them coming. Um, but that's it for this video. So bis die nächste video. Mach's gut und schwätz Deutsch.